Good morning, everybody. Hello, how is everyone doing? I hope you are well. Uh, you may be able to hear the uh, the cars and some little Tweety Birds outside because I've got the window open. It is quite warm here in the UK today. Um, but today's video, we're going to be looking at painting this, I think, kind of cool colour scheme uh, that I've done for my Tyranids from the Leviathan box. So this is a new Termagant. Uh, you will have uh, seen the kit review, hopefully, of this kit already on my channel. But we're going to do a a, uh, a how to paint how I got this this colour scheme down. It's quite straightforward. Um, uh, it does take maybe a little bit longer than uh, you would want to for an entire army. However, there are some kind of sections that you can uh, abbreviate a little bit, and we'll go through that when we get there. But uh, we're going to have a look at uh, at painting this particular model because. We got one side that's not painted, uh, so let's get on with this, and I will. Uh, I'll see you in the video. So uh, here we are. Let's get painting. We've got uh, the colours in here. So we have uh, Lupercal Green from uh, Citadel. We've got Turquoise, Blue Green, and Nice Yellow from Vallejo Model Colour. You can use equivalents. It's, it's absolutely fine if you find something that's close. I just like these ones. Now the um the the kind of the strong mid-tone is the turquoise so that's uh, that's the color which is going to kind of come across the most when we start painting but um starting off with lupercal green now lupercal green has got absolutely <laughs> it's got absolutely horrendous coverage uh it's really really bad so you can uh, as you can see here i'm just pretty much just scrubbing it i'm not doing it i'm not trying to do a, a, a like a neat opaque coat over the whole model like I don't want the whole thing to be lupercal green what you're trying to do is trying to create some um, some texture marks with the movement of your brush so that when the lupercal green dries you get like interesting like little marks and textures and things all the way across um, all the way across the skin and the model the um, the paints on the wet palette, you just saw them on the wet palette, um, the paints are watered down. They're watered down probably, I don't know, a little bit less than 50-50, so maybe 60% water, 50-40%, uh, sorry, 60% paint, 40% water, something like that. It's it just watered down a little bit just so you can get um, get a, uh, a good smooth finish because what you are doing, is, as you can see here, we are just scrubbing it on, um, and this is an old... Art <laughs> it's an old Da Vinci brush. Sorry, I've got Rich Gray's videos in my head. Um, it's a it's an old um, Da Vinci size one brush. I use Da Vinci's all the time. Um, the link in the uh, description if you want to grab one of those. But um, yeah, it's an old Da Vinci brush. You can see the uh, the hairs are kind of um, like scraggled and 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 pointy, and there's not really a very very good good point uh, when you are using a brush like this. Then it's important that, you, that you're just kind of aware and you slow down just a little bit. I've got quite good muscle memory for doing this now, so you can see I'm, I'm a little bit quicker. But you, uh, if, if you slow down, you just need to be very aware of where the bristles are. Um, so they make really good marks and they make kind of really good scraggly random marks. Um, and it, it helps uh, over having like a pointed... Uh, brush, but uh, obviously you you want to make sure that we're getting the paint in exactly the right places. Um, so uh, yeah, just be just be very aware when you are kind of slowly getting the paint onto the model that um, uh, where the where the bristles are pointing and and what they might uh, catch if you're not too careful. Because we are trying to do this neatly, like it's we are kind of scribbling it on and and creating texture and stuff, but we are trying to do this neatly. So this is turquoise. And uh, we're, we're, we're focusing on the high points um, and I'm trying to create a little bit of contrast and we've got uh, also a nice hot spot on the on the tail that you can see that I'm uh, adding on here. This is going to look at, uh, it's going to create like a really good little hot spot on the tail. Uh, rather than um, highlighting all the way across the length, you can create little bits of interest. I'm, I, all I'm doing there is I'm just um, kind of wet blending a bit of lupercal green into the edges so that it softens it out a little bit. Um, if you create a hot spot in the centre of the tail, it kind of creates a bit more interest in the tail and a bit more. Uh, no, it it kind of creates more contrast, but it bit makes a, a a bit more of a menacing look if you just like highlight part of it as if as if the skin is like 
translucent or um, uh, pearlescent sort of thing and it just kind of catches the light where it wants to. Um, apologies if you can hear the, the traffic outside a little bit. Uh, it is very warm in the UK today so I've got the window open. Uh, but um, hopefully the traffic's not too bad and you do get to hear the, some of the birds hopefully because uh, I can hear the birds outside. <laughs> um, yeah, so the 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 color scheme i just wanted to talk a little bit about the color scheme the color scheme has been inspired by my uh one of my favorite movie franchises which is alien the the original poster for alien had this really really cool eerie green glow coming from the egg i'm sure everybody remembers it um and i used that eerie green on my necrons because i wanted my necrons to be like really eerie and evil and the necrons um once i used that eerie green then the necrons obviously then went blue and kind of a, a very antique gold um, and then some turquoise as well for the blackstone and i wanted to use the same kind of eerie green on on the tyranids and have that like xenomorph um glow coming from like the the blood um but using the the blood idea and that eerie green within the recesses and like the it started with the screamer killer like the the plasma from the screamer killer so using that on the in the recesses of the skin and everything and then extrapolating that out like what would go with that eerie green well i didn't want to just do black because that was going to be dull so i wanted to make the the black skin a little bit more interesting so highlight it with a little bit of turquoise and it kind of shifts it to um shifts it to this tone um and then it needed something else to complement it as as well on top of that so which is where you end up with the red carapaces as well uh, I, i'm not the, the the one part of the color scheme that i'm not 100 percent convinced about is the red carapace so let me know what you think when we get there um but um yeah to, to, to get back to the the actual painting so that's how like the color scheme evolved like it started with um it started with the eerie green and then I was just trying to kind of bring in other colours to match it up and try to keep the contrast going. I always like painting in high contrast, so uh, yeah, that's that's really interesting. So we've uh, <laughs> this is the this is where the painting starts getting really interesting. So f for me anyway, like I really like painting. I really like painting like this, um, and this is this is also why this model took a little bit longer than perhaps it needed to. You can speed this up, like it's you can you can stop stop this at any point you can like speed up some of the little marks you don't have to be quite so so neat if you don't want to be but this is um this is now the blue green with a little bit of ice yellow mixed into it so the blue green was the was the last kind of highlight that we had on um and then this has got just a little bit of ice yellow into it just to give it a bit of punch and what we're doing is after we'd done the turquoise and it's highlighting in exactly the same way as you would normally so you kind of keeping the light volumes and uh, making the highlights smaller on those light volumes so for instance the, the the shoulder there you can see the shoulder is it's got a smaller mark on the top of it um where the where the highlight is getting smaller and smaller and this is this is now just kind of pushing that contrast even further and when you when you paint something dark and you want it to have like a dark moody feel you don't paint the whole model dark like you can't paint the whole model dark you end up losing so much uh, kind of contrast and everything in it so you need to make sure that you have some highlights um so that the darkness of the model kind of shows through um like you can't have you can't have dark without light right and so that, that that's where this is coming from now we are very very much focusing these kind of hot spots and the bright spots in very very small areas and uh, prominently on like the top uh top top surfaces so like the top of the shoulders uh like around the head because the head is a, a very 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 big focal point so we want the head to be kind of quite bright uh, and then we allow the rest of the model to darken the overall look of it um and so like the the, the shoulders and uh, the hips and the, the center of the tail 
is pretty much the only place that we're they're, they're the only places that we're kind of focusing on there's a there's a little bit of a calf muscle there as well which is quite a nice shape uh, and that can uh, that can kind of get um that can get uh, the, the highlight on that can get pushed quite high as well but other than that we're going to make sure that we're kind of keeping everything else like one highlight level lower so if you go up to we go up to ice yellow on some of these points so we don't want to go up to ice yellow on some of the lower lower areas uh, we want to keep those keep those dark but obviously you need a highlight so that the darks then have some contrast it's the same same theory as why you uh, or why i sorry why i paint the the base rims black the uh, the, the black creates like the the darkest point uh, across the model and gives the gives the whole model contrast as soon as you uh, add a lighter tone to that it kind of lightens the the black point on the whole model so that's what that's why I use black on uh, on my base rooms um, but so the this is like I say this is the, uh, the the blue green with a little bit of ice yellow in it and after after you kind of push the hotspots uh, and push the highlights what you can do is you can find little marks around the model that you've been creating with the kind of the the scribbled on lupercal green and the and the the messy application well i say messy like the the scribbled application of of, uh, of the last two paints of, of the turquoise and the lupercal green and you can find little marks and you can just it's, it's kind of like the same way as when you are uh, adding scratches to space marines if you watch any of my space marine videos um if you add a scratch, if you see a little kind of little paint blemish, if you like, uh, where the paint hasn't quite gone on opaque and smooth, um, you can just add like a little mark onto it. So you can just highlight it. So on top of highlighting and creating the, uh, the, the light volumes and, and pushing the light volumes higher, what you can also do is you can look into the shadows, find little, little blemishes and little marks uh, and just add to them just like kind of pop them out a little bit and that also create uh, increases the contrast as well because then you've suddenly got like a hot spot uh, a tiny tiny little hot spot you've got to be very very gentle and very soft with the brush when you do it uh, a tiny little hot spot in the uh, in the shadow area as well and it, that kind of pushes the shadow area even brighter um now one of the things that i was kind of umming and ahhing about on this is whether i wanted to desaturate the turquoise at all um, because it was inspired uh, by the xenomorphs, and the xenomorphs are obviously black, um, and I wanted I wanted like kind of that 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 dark uh, dark feel to it. Now, if I desaturated the the turquoise by adding white to it rather than ice yellow, then I could have desaturated the the feel of it um, and taken a little bit of that turquoise away, taken a little bit of that color away from it. Um, Ultimately, I decided not to. I, I, I thought kind of having having the model inspired by the xenomorphs rather than just like an exact copy. Uh, I thought that would be uh, I thought that would be better. So, uh, and and also <laughs> I kind of really like how the turquoise came out. Uh, now, I, as you can see here, that it is slightly out of focus. I am I'm very very sorry for that. It does correct uh, in about thirty seconds. It doesn't take long. Uh, but all we're doing this is. Um, corn red I think it was corn red I showed uh, it's corn red with a little bit of black mixed into it as you can see it's a very very dark uh, dark reddy brown uh, this is my like I absolutely love painting red um, and you kind of need this really really dark tone like Gal Galvor back red is a, a, also a really really nice one to use but it's it's watered down so it's it's not very opaque. Uh, you can see I'm not, I haven't got very much on, uh, paint on the brush when I'm uh, painting it either, because um, I want that kind of black primer to show through a little bit. And and yeah, so you you, you in the same way as when you were applying the turquoise, you do want to. Um, make sure that you're kind of covering everything so you don't want anything any black in the recesses that creates a little bit too much contrast um, and uh, it, it it actually looks a little bit messy when you have black in the recesses it's far better in my opinion to have just a little hint of that kind of color in the recess uh, rather than just like true black like a, a shadow is never like 
true black in in there so that just that kind of especially when you've gone to the effort of, of mixing that very very dark kind of ready brown color uh, and it's a really it is a really really nice ready brown like rhinox hide is kind of close but i i, I you can use like a rhinoxy hide mournfang brown as a shadow for red but ultimately i prefer mixing a um, mixing a little bit of black in with the red you seem to I, I you just seem to get a nicer tone out of it um so uh, yeah there we go so what what we are what we are kind of applying on now we've got the the corn red uh, the mephiston red the corn red with a little bit of black in uh, the mephiston red and then we've got evil sun scarlet as well we are applying this in um in lines so we're making sure that our brushes uh, our brushes moving uh, along the length of the carapace so that we've got the lines and the texture being created uh, thank you mr lorry uh, <laughs> so you've got the the texture being created uh, on the carapace just by the direction that you're running the brush on and we keep we're keeping the the highlights on the the back edge of the carapace apart from this apart from the nose here because we try we, we want the uh, the front of the nose to be quite bright and uh, uh, again a focal point front of the front of the nose uh, the the face and everything is always like a focal point so we'll try and get the red uh, point in that way on that but basically everywhere else you're just picking one side of the carapace and adding these little striations adding these texture marks uh, the bone marks the um, the grain of the of the carapace on there uh, the, the chitin if you like or the chitin uh, i don't know what um, i don't know i think i've always called it chitin and then uh, i heard uh, people pronounce it as chitin uh, which kind of makes a bit more sense um but uh, yeah so just kind of it's exactly the same across the entire model now so all we're doing is getting a little bit of red um and highlighting across all the uh, across all the striations and the, uh, the the grain of the carapace now the last little bit here i w i really wanted in the same vein as adding contrast to the skin i really wanted to push the contrast on the red now this is very very dangerous because the more of this you apply the less red the armor looks because basically we're we're adding pink to it now so this was ice yellow with a little bit of uh, evil sun scarlet in it just to kind of push it to that pink tone that you can see on the wet palette and this as you can see it really pushes the contrast but it's desaturated like the it's desaturated the whole red so it doesn't look as red anymore um and what you can do is once you've applied it if it is looking a little bit too red you can get a you, you can either mix in a little bit more uh, evil sun scarlet or you can get some thin down evil sun scarlet and kind of just just cut into some of the marks that you've made uh, like like thin them out a little bit um and then the red sitting next to that kind of pinky tone that you've got the red sitting next to that will will add a bit of saturation back in so this is almost kind of like you you go uh, backwards and forwards on this so uh, but you can see there that was a perfect example there you added the red the red highlight the red striations on the back of the carapace and then you just put a little bit of dot of pink on the end of it and uh, it just kind of smoothed everything out to that um, and uh, yeah just just basically just rinse and repeat across the whole model now um you can like, i'm trying to think of ways that you can speed this up because like ultimately it didn't take that long and i think I think if I was to do a unit of 20, I would do them like this. Um, like batch painting is one of the things that I find when I'm batch painting is I get lazy and uh, like the, the care which I'm applying these marks now, I wouldn't apply when I start batch painting. So you start getting lazy and you start losing losing track of the overall goal um, of what it is you're painting and you'll find that some of these highlights start getting stronger and stronger and stronger you need to if you are batch painting you need to be very disciplined in keeping your highlights tight uh, and arguably paint slower to paint faster if that makes sense uh, it doesn't make sense at all i will explain <laughs> <laughs> paint faster to paint slower um paint slower so you need to uh, if, you, if you are batch painting i would suggest 
like consciously moving your brush slower um, so that you've got more control over the brush and it it, ma it really makes you think about where you're applying the paint um, and therefore you will paint quicker a little bit of fluff on the brush there uh, you will paint quicker because you're not kind of going back and correcting things um, so like the the step on uh, doing this bit here that you're going to uh, overdo a little bit is if you're batch painting you'll find yourself applying too much of this pink highlight and then once you've done the 20th model if you compare it to the first model the first model will look really contrasty and dark and and menacing and the the, the last model will look pink um so <laughs> yeah uh, when you're batch painting just just be very aware of things like that uh, and almost almost have a example model sat right in front of you so that you're not pushing things a bit too far um that, that i mean that's that's just what i find anyway i tend to get uh, i tend to um i've done it with a lot of things as well like uh, even when I, you were stacking shelves you always like um i I've, I've always said that stacking shelves is the easiest job you'll ever do but you you um you find shortcuts in that as well and when you're batch painting when you're batch painting you will find shortcuts in the process uh, it's just I, I i think it's just human nature but yeah you will find little shortcuts and then you will uh, the 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 models may suffer from it um sometimes they might not like um I'm trying to think of a. I'm trying to think of an example for this, but I, I can't really think of one. But um, yeah, just be, just just something to be aware of when you are kind of batch painting these, because I think they would batch paint quite well. But that angle there shows perfectly why you need the brights to keep the darks, because you've got the brights on the shoulders. But look how dark um, the rest of the the skin looks, and look how dark the rest of the armor looks. Uh, just kind of like the the nice bright highlights and then the mid tones is is what's telling your telling the eye and telling uh, telling the viewer what what color the model is it's really really cool I like it a lot and you saw me mix a little bit more of that. Um, that that pink on the wet palette as well um, a, a, a while ago. You saw me mix mix a bit more of that. Uh, that was just because I, I mixed a little bit, and uh, just just because I wasn't quite sure whether whether I was going to use this highlight or not. So I mixed a tiny little bit, just tried it, uh, and I was like, actually no, that does work. Um, and and then it had uh, it had dried out by then. So I was I was when I kept going back to get some more paint, there wasn't actually any paint left. So I, I had to mix a little bit more. Um, in terms of in terms of um, percentages on that, uh, I would say it's the majority of it is Evil Sun Scarlet, and then it's just got a dab of ice yellow, like I don't know, five percent, ten percent ice yellow. Uh, ice yellow is quite a strong color when you're mixing it with that red. Um, so wh whatever colors you're mixing in, there will always be like a strong color within that mix and um like sometimes it's black sometimes it's the the ice yellow in this in this situation it was the ice yellow the ice yellow is a very very uh, very very strong pigmented color now again this is inspired by the xenomorphs if you look at a xenomorph they have like metallic teeth and i really wanted to kind of get that across on here as well so the uh, the tyranids and all the tyranids which I'm doing have got uh, any any claws. Uh, I also added the hooves in as well. But any claws, uh, teeth, talons, anything like that, uh, I'm I'm actually painting silver, and I think it looks really cool. Like there's so I don't think I've ever seen actually. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a, like a metallic, uh, what a metallic color on a tyranid. And uh, like, if you just think about it for a second, it's like well, maybe, maybe they do kind of evolve and have like an ore um, coming out. Uh, like they've uh, they've evolved into uh, uh, an ore rather than a protein that comes out for their weapons or something. I don't know, but it, it kind of almost makes sense uh, in my head anyway. But uh, I, I also think it looks really, really good. Um, 
it's a tricky one to do because I, again I wanted it quite strong um, and I wanted to try to keep the contrast on uh, this is true metallics so this is black metal from scale color uh, it's an absolutely beautiful paint uh, a, a lot of the scale color metallics are fantastic you'll hear me kind of rave about them all the time it's it's mainly down to the grind of the metallic flex that they've got in the paint it's incredibly fine and then the medium that they use because it's like a slightly different medium the medium that they use uh, just um, transports and floats that paint absolutely beautifully so it go they go on really really smoothly and uh, yeah they they're, they're fantastic so black metal um, black metal for the base and then we're going to highlight it up with uh, with chrome afterwards now you'll see there i just removed the metallic paint from the wet palette i whenever i've finished using metallic paint on my palette it will always get kind of just sucked off um with a little bit of kitchen roll like that um i i very rarely leave uh, metallic paints on my wet palette uh, and uh, like sometimes i use them in my well palette anyway so rather than having them on the wet palette and uh, yeah it's it's just a it's just um a little insurance thing that i use um i will um i will always make sure that that metallic paints aren't on there just so that you don't get metallic flecks all over the uh, either into the water or in your foam or anything like that uh, and actually i'm getting very very close to the edge of the wet palette here as well i, I i'm not normally this close to the edge uh and uh, yeah so <laughs> um i'm i'm trying to uh, i'm trying to have a wet palette in in shot a little bit more on these painting videos uh and it just means that you end up using the corner of the wet palette a lot uh, i have got another camera but i just thought because i've just kind of rearranged my desk and kind of sorted everything out a little bit more you'll notice i've got a different uh, different kind of backdrop uh, I just thought I would just have the corner of the wet palette in. I thought it would make some more sense. Right, so the the fun bit uh, for me. Now, this is annoyingly tricky to do, and these paints are horrendous. So if you would like an alternative, um, you're going to have to mix some from the Games Workshop line. And But if you base it around something like Moot Green, uh, Moot Green, Uriel Yellow, you need a little bit of white because it's quite a desaturated kind of eerie green so you'll need to mix a little bit of white into there as well uh, but um, yeah moot green uriel yellow a little bit of white and you'll get something similar then you can just kind of go up and down in brightness but uh, this is olive green from vallejo and this is a fresh pot uh, because the last the last pot i had uh, it's actually the last pot of uh, olive uh, olive green and yellow green were both terrible i don't know what had happened but um, they're, they're also quite old paint, so I've got some fresh ones, and the new, the new mix of these is, uh, I don't know whether they have changed the formula or something, but it does go on a lot better. Still not great, but it does go on a lot better. Anyway, so this is olive green, yellow green, and then we're going to use some of the uh, ice yellow that we already have on the wet palette as well. And we are, uh, we, we want the glows on these kind of, uh, internal skin webbing we want the the glow to be in the center of them all so the olive green is a little bit thin down and uh, we're, we're also applying it to the gun as well so any kind of webbing or energy blood anything like that i'm trying to do that and then there's also sort of some creases in the skin as well which i can apply it to but it's uh, it's slightly thinned down and then where we want the hotspot to be we're going to apply it to the area where we want the hotspot and then highlight all the other ribs around it so that the the glow and like the light focus is in that that center point which we we, we kind of applied it to um, and then kind of scatter it around add it into some recesses between joins things like that just just if if there's a uh, an interesting little area which you think might benefit from a little bit of green like down on the bottom of the legs there it just adds a bit of interest down to the dark areas down there uh, so olive green down there and then they've got the 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 yellow green which is you can see it's a little bit brighter and you can start pushing that contrast uh, same with the tongue you're just kind of pushing the contrast on the tongue um, now you can I, I i 
I wouldn't recommend doing this bit. You can apply it in the recesses between the teeth, but then you kind of lose the teeth. So I, uh, like with hindsight, I probably wouldn't have done this. I wanted to add it like as as if it was like mucus around the mouth, like glowy mucus, but it doesn't doesn't quite work, and you lose a bit of contrast in the uh, in the metal teeth. So uh, I, I, if I was you, I, I wouldn't do that bit. Um, but you can see now, as soon as you start highlighting the hot spots where we applied that olive green, it starts looking really cool, really eerie, um, and you, you get a, a, a nice little bit of glow going there. Don't highlight all of them, so you notice like, that there's, there's still two above that one there, which we've, uh, we've, we've not highlighted. Um, it's just so that we've kind of the uh, the the light is focused towards the um, towards the centre. And the the hardest the hardest thing here actually is actually trying to find the ribs to highlight, uh, because when you're looking at them and they're all when the olive green is on there, uh, when you're looking at them they all kind of blend in together. It's a, it's terrible. It's it's they're really really difficult to paint. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just in this exactly the same way as you have been highlighting everything else it's pretty much the same theory uh, highlight uh, a, a smaller area to focus the uh, to focus the glow focus the highlight uh, but just don't do the <laughs> don't do the mouth I don't think it brings anything to it like the screamer killer uh, when you see the screamer killer pick the screamer killer is like it's screaming this kind of eerie uh, eerie green plasma from its mouth and that looks cool but the uh, the hormigans uh, yeah just just do the tongue the tongue is fine having a glowy glowy green tongue is uh, is probably all you need so i'm going over them again uh, because these paints are not very translucent uh, sorry not very opaque so they, they are quite a translucent paint so i'm just going over again giving them every chance to uh, kind of pop that uh, nice bright green color uh, you'll see that every time I'm kind of going in and touching it up again it's adding a little bit more brightness uh, and that's just the the um, that's just the um, it's just the, uh, the the quality of the paint uh, that's all that is uh, it's one of the one of the foibles of it it's uh, it's not one of those opaque ones that you can make a good mark up with straight away um, it's also got quite a heavy it's got quite a heavy sort of uh, medium to it as well so it uh, it flows quite um, quite badly uh, and this is the ice yellow this is the final little bit just to kind of pop the last little bit of a, uh, a highlight on here Again, just focusing the, the the tiny little areas uh, you just want a bit of pop just a tiny little bit of pop exactly the same way as we were doing when we did the uh, the pink on the red uh, carapace um, and this is chrome this is the final highlight for the uh, for the metallic um, and uh, yeah this is <laughs> I, I was painting the painted the, uh, the the glow between the teeth I was like, well, the, the teeth have just vanished now. I, they've, they've lost all contrast. It's disappeared. So that's that's why I uh, then came back straight away with the chrome. Uh, but this is the next step anyway. So highlighting all the metallic. It's a really simple. Uh, it's a really simple highlight. Um, you can highlight the hooves in like the same kind of striation way that we used when we were painting the carapace. Um, but the claws just whenever the uh, particularly when the kind of small claws like this it gets a little bit more tricky when we get the leaper and the the new death leaper oh my god how nice is the new death leaper can't wait to paint him um, so yeah it gets a little bit more tricky when you're painting the big claws on the leapers and things uh, but we'll get to those at some point I will be doing a video I, I you can guarantee I will be doing a video on the death leaper when I get him and uh, yeah I can't wait to paint him so yeah, any surface, any metallic surface which is facing upwards, just add a nice, nice neat. Uh, if you can be as neat as you can with this final kind of chrome highlight, uh, then that would be really, really cool. It just adds uh, adds a little bit of pop. Um, painting the painting the eye. I was going to make this eye glow, but the the area around the eye is so confined. Um, all I did was just kind of make the eye bright 
so rather than making it glow and kind of have the uh, the green reflecting on the the lower eyelid or anything i just painted it bright so it's uh, it's olive green with a highlight of yellow green and then a highlight dot of um, ice yellow and, and that's it uh, and that is pretty much it i mean it doesn't it doesn't take that long there's not really been many skips on this video um so yeah it, it it doesn't really take that long so i think batch painting i don't think you're gonna have trouble batch painting these um i <laughs> I, I know i keep going on about hormigants i cannot wait to do this scheme on a hormigant i think it would look amazing um i think i saw somebody post a picture of the third edition hormigants with the big spikes as well as the claws and that would be phenomenal if they kind of re redid those and in, were, were inspired by those and uh, so yes base the base is incredibly simple it's it's thick mud from vallejo texture paint um and uh, it's just blobbed all over the blobbed all over the base it is then highlighted with uh, i think it's carrick stone it's it's had some some brown put over it a quick dry brush with carrick stone and then this is a vallejo pigment uh, this is i think this is burnt burnt sienna was it burnt sienna hang on i've got it here um yeah burnt sienna so this is just burnt sienna get a little bit on a dry brush the brush has to be dry do not put this on with a wet brush if you want to learn how to do pigment washes then you can watch my video on the terminator captain i do some pigment washes there um, but um, if you're just applying pigments in this in this way it has to be a dry brush and uh, and there we go so yeah little termigan all done i think i will probably add a little bit of a tuft on there but that's the that's the other side as well now look at the difference between the two sides uh, this side has the pink highlight on the carapace and the back side doesn't so you can just kind of rewind and flick between those two if you want to but the first side was like the test side and it looks way less contrasty because uh, I was kind of going up and down between all the colors trying to figure out which way to go and then this because we've done this one from scratch this one looks looks it's got much more contrast to it uh, and I, I, I do really <laughs> do really really like it I am not sure on the red now the, the the one thing I'm wondering about the red is whether to kind of shift it the other direction and go purple um, so it's obviously taken the taken the turquoise and it's gone warm. Now I'm wondering whether I can take the turquoise and go a little bit colder um, and kind of go to a purple carapace. I'm not sure. I, I might try and do another one uh, or an, like maybe even just another one side of a termigant uh, with a different color carapace just to see. But I'm not sure. I do really like the turquoise though. I think the turquoise, the, the nice contrasted turquoise looks amazing. So thank you very much everybody. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, I certainly enjoyed painting them up. I uh, can't wait to do more of these Tyranid colour schemes for you. And uh, yes, I should be live tonight. The internet connection should be uh, should be on and uh, should be live tonight. So hopefully see you on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Chris Frossin. Uh, please drop me a follow there and you can find me at uh, on Instagram and Twitter uh, at Chris Frossin as well. And until the next video... Um, I will see you later. Keep painting, guys. Take care and have an amazing rest of the week. Thanks very much for watching. And as always, please like and share. Take care. Bye-bye.